hello everyone a very good morning welcome back and uh, let's start in the last session we discussed about the primary physical server how to create a physical like how uh, if an application is there and that application how we are going to store in a physical server okay and what are the uh, pros and cons of the physical server okay. so this is the topic that we have seen in the last session and in this session we are going to discuss about virtualization okay so whenever we have some certain problem with a single solution then we will choose for the alternative solution so here there is a lot of problem with the physical server what is the problem with the physical server the main problem with the physical server is load okay the load will be continuously fluctuating and not only that it is not the main problem the main problem is resource misutilization will be there if there are large number of resources in the physical server then the resources will be misused utilized so to overcome this problem to overcome this problem uh, so now what happened our uh, techies has introduced a new concept called as virtualization so virtualization is also a uh, oh, what i can say it's a, it's a, it's a logical way of dividing a server into logical way of dividing a server into multiple logical machines okay so i am having a uh, i'm having a server okay so now what is the server capacity the server capacity is somewhere around 16 cpu uh, 128 gb of ram or 16 cpu some uh, uh, 256 gb of ram okay so now my requirement is that I want to uh, reduce the load on the server or else I want to reduce the uh, misconception of the server. So for that, what I'm going to do, whatever the physical resources are there. So this is my physical mission, which is of having 16 CPU, 16 CPU, uh, somewhere around 128 GB of RAM. Okay, 128 GB of RAM. Now, this high configuration server, I don't want to misutilize the resources. So, for that reason, what I am doing here is. <clears throat> So what I'm doing here is I'm dividing this particular server into small, small logical servers by using a concept called as virtualization. So here we are going to install a layer called as virtual machines or virtualization. So here, what are the different virtualization uh, softwares that we are having means we are having uh, VMware, VMware, Citrix, okay, hypervisor, hyper V. So these are all comes under the virtualization. So what is the main functionality of them? They will divide the large server into large physical mission into small small missions. So here I'm I can create a I can create a server. Okay. So this server is having somewhere around uh, it is going to have some two cpu and uh, some 16 gb of ram okay so this is the mission capacity and likewise what you can do you can create multiple virtual missions so i'm going with the same uh, virtual mission like same resource specification two cpu 16 gb of ram two cpu 16 gb of ram like this now if you can see how many cpus are there if you see here there are uh, so six six cpu and somewhere around 
uh, 48 GB of RAM utilization is like having. So from where these virtual machines are going to get the resources from the from the physical mission only. So who will coordinate with the physical missions and these virtual missions? So VMware, whatever the software that I have specified over here, this will be acting like a mediator to create this particular virtual mission and provide the specific amount of resources. Now, if you are having, uh, if you are having multiple applications, some application is running on Java. So here on the first mission, you can install Java and run your application and uh, some applications need dotnet dotnet is especially in the windows operating system we can create in the windows operating system now what i can do i can create a dotnet application in this particular virtual machine now if you can see uh, the last one will be python so there is a python application you can write uh, you can run this python application now what is happening here now the resources are getting divided whatever the physical resources are there they are getting divided into logical resources and as well as this single physical server is now divided into three logical servers and inside each and every logical server you can install your own operating system i can install linux operating system i can install windows operating system and as well as i can install uh somewhere around for example, Linux, this is Ubuntu, and this is I can call it as a Red Hat. So these type of operating systems you can install. So what is happening? You can see a diversity in the particular uh, single server. In a single server, you can run multiple type of operating systems and multiple applications can be run. So this is the concept of virtualization so that there will be a ease of accessing the services. So now, if you go with a single physical server, in a single physical server, either you can install the Linux operating system or else you can install the Windows operating system. So at a time, you cannot run Linux or Windows operating system. So if you want to have that, what we are doing here is, we are going with the virtualization concept. So uh, this is the virtualization concept. Understood? Any questions here? What did you understood from this concept? Do you understand what is this virtualization? Any questions? Hello. What did you understand uh, from this? Whatever we have discussed now, what did you understand about this? What is no? Do you understand or not? Any questions? So what is no over there? In the chat you have given no. Uh, no questions, good. Now, this is the main concept of virtualization. If you want to check out the virtualization process, so there are multiple types of virtualizations are available. So two types of virtualizations are available. One is, so the first one is type one hypervisor or type one virtualization. This is also known as bare metal virtualization. This is also known as bare metal virtualization. Okay. And the next one is uh, we can call it as uh, 
the next one is type 2 hypervisor okay or it is also known as hosted virtualization hosted virtualization these are the two types of virtualizations now what is the main difference between bare metal virtualization and hosted virtualization bare metal versus hosted now if you see these images here you can clearly get the uh, clear cut understanding about what is the difference between bare metal and uh, hosted hypervisor. This will help you to understand what is the main difference between bare metal and hosted. Okay, this is the very good example for you. Containerization, we'll come back to this. First of all, you need to understand these two. Okay, so now what is happening here? There will be a hardware on the top of that. This is not the host operating system. Your voice is, is not audible. My voice is not audible to all. Hello. 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 Audible. Am I audible or not? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Yeah, thank you. So here you can see there is a hardware. Hardware in the sense you are having CPU, RAM and all the things. On the top of that, we are installing the operating system. Here, this is not an operating, normal operating system like your Windows and all the things. Here we are going to install VMware PSXI. Okay, there is a concept, uh, there is a uh, specialized virtualization operating system. I will not call it as an operating system, a virtualization software called as VMware ESXi or Citrix or Windows Hypervisor. Like that, you are having multiple operating operating systems. So hardware is there. On the top of that, you can install the operating system on the top of the operating system what you can do you can create the virtual machine okay you can create a virtual machine and inside the virtual machine you can run your application this is a bare metal hypervisor now when you come to the next one this is the hosted virtualization where you are going to have the hardware on the top of that, you are going to install the operating system like Windows or Linux. So if you come to the Windows, so then it is like a VMware and then VirtualBox. There is there is one of the software called as VirtualBox, and you can see there is if you are if you are running Linux operating system, you can install KVM kernel based virtual machine like that. So there is hardware on the top of that you can install your own operating system like windows or linux on the top of that you can run the hypervisor like whatever i have said vmware workstation uh, uh virtual box kvm like that on the top of that you can install a virtual machine you can create a virtual machine uh, and inside the virtual machine we are going to install a guest operating system and inside that there will be the applications so this is how you are you are going to have your hosted virtualization this is the bare metal and this is the hosted virtualization so in the companies when you go for a company in the company most of the virtualization will be bare metal virtualization not most of that every 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 uh, company servers or also every company if they have they are implementing the virtualization they will be going with the bare metal virtualization only okay they will be going the bare metal virtualization only hosted virtualizations can be used for the client side client side in the sense if i want to run the virtual missions in my laptop then i can go with the hosted virtualization but the companies can be going with the bare metal virtualization now whatever the aws servers so in the aws if you are creating any uh, any kind of 
okay if you are creating any kind of uh, servers or instances all those instances will come under virtual machines only these virtual machines are the bare metal virtual machines and uh, there we are we are using the amazon virtualization okay so there we are not going to use this kind of uh, vmware uh, esxi or citrix there we are using the amazon virtualization so this is the concept of your bare metal and uh, hosted virtual mission so if you see the difference between bare metal and hosted mission there is a little bit confusion in this diagram the confusion is here you are having the hardware on top of that you are having the virtualization software like vmware esxi or citrix or, Hi or windows or hypervisor on the top of that again you will be having a virtual machine which is having its own guest operating system guest operating system in the sense uh, either it might be a windows operating system or linux operating system for that virtual machine not for the entire uh, uh, physical server for that virtual machine you will be having the guest operating system and that guest operating system will have its own kernel and the applications will be requesting the uh, required amount of resources from that kernel only now do you have any idea what is a kernel before i go into the containerization do you have any idea what is a kernel okay anyone anyone okay so now uh, let us discuss what is meant by kernel so kernel is a very very important concept of your entire operating system i don't know why you don't know about the kernel but the point is kernel is like an interaction between the operating system and the hardware now actually what is an operating system this everyone knows about this operating system will act like an interface between user and the hardware between user and hardware if uh, a communication has to be established then we will use the operating system so if i want to run any application then we will install the application in the hardware uh, sorry then we will install the application in the operating system and whenever we are trying to communicate with the uh, uh, for example zoom application is there if i run the zoom application i can interact with you so first of all this should be processed under the hardware so between user and the hardware if anything has to be happened that will be happening to the operating system this everyone knows about this which means you will be having like this <clears throat> so this is your uh, for example i am i am the user okay i am the user and there is a hardware physical hardware is there and if i want to run any application so i am having a computer so now inside the computer if i don't have any operating system i cannot interact with the computer so for that reason what i am doing here i am installing an operating system so this is the os which i am installing now this os will help me to run my applications if the application has to be running then there should be hardware without hard without cpu without ram the application won't be running so the user will communicate with the operating system to run the application but what operating system will be the, will be doing so the most important component of the operating system is kernel so without this kernel your operating system will not able to communicate with the hardware so kernel is a compiler kernel is a manager so kernel what is the main functionality of the kernel it will manage the memory so how much amount of ram should be given to an application how much amount of cpu should be given to an application if the load is increasing so then the ram should be increased who is going to manage all these things there should be some management procedure right so that process or else that particular manager is nothing but your kernel so this kernel will help you to make the communication between the operating system and the hardware so it is going to do the memory management 
process management network management storage management okay these are all these are all things will be done by your kernel so that is how important is kernel okay so there will be an operating system and there will be a kernel and then there will be a hardware now user requesting any application to be open so the application will be installed inside the os so that application is nothing but somewhere like your uh, what i can say your virtualization vmware okay vmware workstation is there if i want to open the vmware workstation what i will do as a windows user i will double click on this application so the application will open so how it will open so operating system will send a signal to the kernel so that the user is user wants to open an application check out how much amount of memory how much amount of processing is required so kernel will understand kernel will compile the request see uh, so user will interact with the operating system with his own own uh, language okay i i can understand english so uh, that language cannot be understood by the hardware so now what should be happen compiling should be happen so who will do the compiling obviously kernel will do the compiling compiling means developers what is meant by compiling guys what is meant by compiling i and developers are there here at least you should say that converting source code to bytecode exactly converting the user understandable language or your source code into the binary language why why it, why it should be converting the uh, source code or user understandable language into binary language because hardware won't understand uh, what are the english language that we are giving so it will only understand the binary language that is ones and zeros so this kernel will compile the request and forward it to the hardware so once the request is forwarded to the hardware hardware in the sense your ram and cpu it will process the request it will process the request and send it back to the user <clears throat> okay so this is how your kernel will be helpful now if you see the linux actually if you see the history of the linux when we come to the history of the linux in 1970 itself the linux unix was developed by uh, kem thompson and uh, uh dennis ritchie i know uh, i think you know about dennis ritchie who is the father of c language okay so these two guys who has invented the unix operating system and uh, they have given it for some sub premium subscription which means that if any user is there and if he wants to uh, use the unix operating system he has to pay for the organization now uh, there is a person called as richard stallman okay so this person has completely against of this particular policy so we are purchasing the we are purchasing the hardware cpu and everything now again why we need to purchase the operating system i don't want to purchase an operating system i will develop my own operating system so he has developed the gnu operating system gnu which means gnu uh it, it's just it is the, it doesn't have any particular abbreviation he is saying that it is not unix operating system what all the operating system he has developed it is not an unix operating system but he failed to develop this kernel what are the kernel that i am saying he failed to develop so if applications are there if the front end is there but there should be something which which should manage the operating system so that management will be happen through the kernel only if kernel itself is not there then the operating system will not work kernel is like a backbone for your operating system which will compile the user request which will manage the user request which will manage the resources so if the kernel is not there then operating system is not able to communicate with the hardware so at that particular time around 1991 there is a person called as linus starwald who has introduced the who has added a linux kernel okay linux kernel so this kernel will interact with the operating system and uh, gives the response for the user 
so by combining the gnu project with the linux kernel so previously whenever the linux was introduced it's a kernel later it has been developed as an operating system they have developed the first linux distribution with the name called as gnu <coughs> linux okay so this is the first distribution gnu linux where there is an connection between the linux kernel and the gnu operating system and that was released into the market for the free of cost open source and free of cost they have released the uh, released into the market so this is about your linux operating system the first linux operating system where there is a so much importance for the kernel so later on you are having so many distros like uh, uh, debian distros uh, red hat distros uh, suse distros uh, like that you are having so many distros and if you go to the operating system you are having CentOS, Red Hat, Ubuntu, uh, Kali Linux and Parrot, uh, Mint. These are all comes under the Linux flavors. Whichever the flavor you want to choose you can choose them. But all of them are the open source and free of cost. And But if you see the behind kernel each and every operating system the kernel will be the same. So this is the prom this is the main important component of your entire operating system now if you see here uh, where is it if you see here so uh, let me go with this uh, example i don't think it is very good please uh, here we go okay hmm. this is the perfect one so what do you want bare metal and the hypervisor so you are having hardware on the top of that we are going to create an hypervisor on the top of that you are having a virtual mission inside the virtual mission we are going to install the guest operating system this guest operating system will have its own kernel and it will uh, whatever the requests are coming for the application that application requests the uh, guest operation system to provide the required hardware so the kernel will provide the required hardware so for the second guest operating system also it will have its own kernel so the application requirement kernel will communicate with the hardware and provides the required hardware like that each and everywhere you are having its own kernel so whenever we are creating a virtual mission if i want to shift the virtual mission from one place to the another place that will be very very difficult for me okay from one environment to the another environment if i want to move the virtual mission it will be a little bit difficult for me why because i have to pack the entire virtual mission which will be very huge size somewhere around 10 gb to 30 gb 40 gb depending on the data it will be sometimes go with the 100 gb also so now if i want to move the entire data from one virtual mission to i mean from one virtual mission environment that is development environment to production environment so you are having servers in the development environment and you will be having the servers in the production environment so whatever the servers that you are seeing in the development environment there in the production environment also you will have the same identical servers so if i want to move this virtual mission from the development environment to production environment it will be very very tough for me why because i have to transfer the huge amount of data you, like packing the entire virtual missions if you don't have the data also it is going to consume somewhere around some 10 to 15 gb to 20 gb of space and that that much amount of virtual mission if i have to transfer from one location to the another location it will be a little bit difficult for me so to overcome this particular problem we have introduced a concept called as containerization so now if you see here <clears throat> what are the Cons of uh, virtualization or drawbacks of virtualization. <coughs> I'm not going with uh, each and everything. So if you can see here. So these are the benefits that the virtualization will give you. So one is lower hardware acquisition cost reduced energy consumption why because we are having in a single physical server we are having multiple virtual missions multiple virtual logical servers so we don't have we don't have to power on each and every 
uh, uh, power on in the sense we don't need uh, multiple physical servers. If you are having multiple physical servers, obviously it is going to consume lots of energy. But here you don't have, you don't need to have the uh, that particular option. Why? Because it will consume a, uh, for a single physical server. You need to provide the power. And inside the physical server, you are having the virtual mission. They will power on whenever you are turning on the virtual uh, physical mission. So most reliable uh, disaster recovery and expedite application development. Easily it can we can develop the application and easy and less expensive way to run the different types of over server OSs. But <clears throat> here you can see there are certain disadvantages. It means the increase the, so there are uh, so some of the stumbling blocks can be avoided. So licenses you have to purchase for each and every server. That is one of the disadvantage. And the most disadvantage here is uh, spinning virtual mission, virtual servers is too easy, single point of failure. Okay, so the, all the virtual missions will be running in a single server. All the virtual mission will be running in a single server. If that server goes down, if the server is powered off, then all the virtual missions will not be available. Okay, so this is one of the uh, disadvantage. <clears throat> and security resource con uh, con contentions. So if you can see here, performance problem will be very uh, okay, but the main problem is if you want to migrate uh, the particular virtual mission from one environment to the another environment, it will be very, very difficult for us. So to overcome this problem, what we are doing here is we are going with a concept called as containerization. Okay, so here I will go with the containerization. This is container. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the best I can give you on this uh, containerization. What will be happening here? So you will have the hardware, you will have the uh, operating system. Okay, on the top of that, what I can do here is, so this is the virtual server and this is the container and this is the bare metal they are saying. So you will be having a hardware on the top of that you will be having the operating system like you have uh, what I can say uh, Unix, uh, Linux and Windows type of operating system. So on the top of that we are going to install a containerization platform. So here you need to understand what is a containerization platform. Containerization platform means you are Docker. Okay. It's just like an application. Come on. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah. This will be very perfectly performed. Let us see here. Hmm. Okay, there. So this is a virtualization. You will be having the infrastructure. On the top of that, you will be having the hypervisor. On the top of that, you will be having the guest operating system. In, in the guest operating system, you will be having the binaries and libraries to run the application without the binaries and uh, libraries you cannot run the application so now when you come to the containerization you will be having the infrastructure on the top of that you will be having an operating system on the top of that you will be having the containerizing container engine so container engine is nothing but your docker or else i can go with container d rkt like that you will be having so many types of container engines so here, one thing you need to uh, be very, very clear.
I'm sorry, guys. There is a small distraction with the network. Yeah. Whenever we are speaking with the Docker, whenever we are speaking about the Docker, the Docker is a container engine. We are not going to talk about the Docker. It's just an application. So if you see here, there are so many uh, multiple tabs are opened in the Chrome browser. Okay. Whenever we have opened the Chrome browser, inside the Chrome browser, you will have the data in a single tab. For example, here you are having certain data. Okay, this data is not uh, uh, this data is not in the uh, what I can say <clears throat> the support for this data will be available with an application called as Chrome. And inside the Chrome, I have opened multiple tabs, nothing but the processes. This is one process, and this is the another process, and this is the another process. Like that, there are so many processes are there. So the container engine, whatever you are seeing, it is an application which is holding the multiple applications <clears throat> multiple processes so whenever we are talking about the docker we need to understand it's a it's a container engine it will carry the containers in general if you see the docker how it is going to look like docker ship so this is how the docker ship will be looking like okay so this is uh, this is where the containers are getting uh, carried out so if you can see, there is a very big ship on the top of that. You are having multiple containers in the physical form. I am telling you. So in each and every container, you will be having a different boots. So if you uh, if you see here, this Docker will carry certain boots from one location to the another location. Either it might be fire textiles, either it might be food, either it might be crude oil, everything. So inside the containers, you will be having multiple type of boots in the same manner. If you come back and check out this one here also, there will be a Docker engine. There will be a Docker engine. On the top of that, you will be having containers. This is one container. This is the another container. This is the another container. In one container, you can run the application that is related to Java. In the another container, you can run the application related to Python. In the another container, you can run the application related to .NET or Node.js. So now, how these applications will interact with the infrastructure. Actually, if you can see here, the applications in virtual mission, they will interact with the guest operating system and guest operating system will have its own kernel and that will interact with the infrastructure. So this is not a very big problem here. When you come here, here we don't have any operating system. So the applications whichever are running, these applications will be interacting with the operating system through the Docker engine or uh, container engine. And the operating system has to you know, communicate with the infrastructure and it has to provide the required amount of uh, resources for this application. Now, how it is going to communicate? It is a Linux operating system. And here you are having Windows operating system container. So now how these two will communicate with your Host operating system, host operating system in the sense you are uh, Windows operating system like this. So to make you more understanding about this, let me do one thing. I will install the Docker on my uh, physical machine, uh, which is nothing but on my laptop. Uh, install Docker desktop on Windows. <clears throat> okay. So I'm downloading it. open PowerShell. So here you can see Windows subsystem for Linux. It is very important. WSL means Windows subsystem for 
line x which is very very important component without this component uh, docker the containers whatever the ubuntu container is there if i am installing a ubuntu container it will not able to send the request to the uh, or else the docker engine itself will not run without the wsl so let us see what is going to happen over here <clears throat> Okay, I hope that uh, the download is completed. Let me check out this one. Okay, the download is completed. Uh, what about this? Here also it is getting installed. So without WSL, I cannot install the Docker on my server. Okay, so why ha what happens if I install Docker on the server also, it, the Docker application will not run. It is going to throw us another. Okay, so. So hold on. So the, the Windows subsystem for Linux has been installed. And after installing that, I need to install the Docker desktop. Okay. Uh, so let me do one thing. I will install it later. The Docker desktop. First of all, let me complete this uh, installing WSL. So hold on. So do you understand what is the difference between uh, virtual mission and containerization? Can anybody explain me what did you understand from this? Can anybody tell me uh, what did you understand from the entire concept? We have seen so much of things like uh, what I can say containerization, virtualization, bare metal virtualization, hosted virtualization. I guess today we have gone through a, a few, few or more concepts. So what did you understand from that? Do you understand the basics or do you having any trouble to understand about this? Going to open a system is not okay, but that's okay. Do you understand what is uh, what is this uh, containerization? Anyone? Can you explain? Anyone? Can you explain? What did you understand? I want the two way of interaction, guys. I don't want. Uh, so I'm not telling Docker is a Linux application. If you want to run a container related to Linux application, Docker is a containerization. Okay, containerization platform. That's it. Okay, so if you see the Chrome, can I tell uh, Chrome is a Linux application? Chrome browser or Firefox browser is a Linux application. You can install the uh, uh, Chrome or uh, uh, Firefox in any of the operating system. I cannot tell you that, right? So in the same manner, Docker is also an application which you can run in any operating system. So see, I am installing Docker on the Windows operating system also. I can install the Docker on the Ubuntu operating system also. So Docker is it is not uh, it is not like Docker is an uh, Linux application. It is an application which you can install in anywhere any operating system. But on the top of that, if you want to install an application, so if you want to install that application on the Linux environment, I am not telling the Linux operating system. That's the point here. Linux environment. So operating system is different and environment is different. Operating system means you will be having each and every <clears throat> component like kernel and every component will comes with the operating system. But I am talking about the environment here. You will be having 
only the binaries and libraries that are related to the Linux environment. So you don't have anything apart from that. You don't have the kernel also for the container. So where from where the container will get the request request or compiling, the compiling will be done on the host operating system only. It doesn't have any sort of operating system, but the container will have the environment. Okay, so now let me check out what happened to this. Okay, the WSL was installed. Now let me try to install the Docker desktop. I think I'm facing challenges with this Docker desktop nowadays. Anyways, let me check out this. <laughs> yes. Okay, it is initializing. Okay. But uh, sometimes it will ask me for a reboot also. So if the uh, Zoom connection has disconnected, I will reconnect back within five minutes. Don't uh, go anywhere. So saying that the class is terminated. So if there is a requirement to reboot the server, I will reboot the mission also. So hold on a second. <laughs> Okay, this is how we are going to install in the Windows operating system. The Docker is getting installed on the Windows operating system. We can install the Docker on the Linux operating system also, Linux Ubuntu operating system also. So for that, what I will do here is I will go for the AWS here. And I will install an uh, server, Linux Ubuntu server. So now whatever the Docker desktop that you are seeing here, it's an uh, application that you are running on the Windows operating system. Now, what are the server that I am going to create? It's a Linux operating system server. Okay. I'll go to the EC2. Instances launch instance. I'm going with the Docker server. Docker, the server name is Docker. I will go with the Ubuntu. P2 Micro is fine, and the key pair will be Apti. So that is why I asked you at least you need to have a basic understanding about the AWS, but at least you need to understand creating the instance okay so i have i'm launching the instead here you can see you are having the docker application let me copy the public ip okay see the application has been completely created now it is asking for the reboot so if the system is rebooted don't go anywhere i will come back within five minutes and start the session so hold on a second
हेलो चैतन्य यू आर ऑन म्यूट i'm sorry i'm very sorry so now if you see here when i run the command docker ps whenever i am running the command called as docker ps it is giving me an output called as container id and everything so which means that we are running certain containers we are running certain containers so if docker engine is not running on my machine when i give the command docker ps it is going to give me the error so again i will start the docker desktop over here docker desktop okay when i open the docker desktop now if you run the command again so look at that there are no containers are running now i am running the command again so i am getting the output as container id and everything so which means that right now there are no containers running now i want to create a container i want to create a container so here you can create the container with the help of command line so now let me show you how i can create the container uh, sorry i interrupt you uh, that uh, you have copied that uh, address from the uh, aws uh, site right then you have put, uh, paste no, no, no. which address i have copied uh, that uh... you uh, create a server in aws i have created that that's it i am not using the that server this is the docker desktop which i am running on my windows operating system okay okay, okay. i have yes. installed no on the windows operating system that okay. that is this there is not the server okay, okay. i will uh, i will come back to the server later okay. so now if you can see Thank here you. now what i will do i will i will run a container so how i am going to run the container docker run uh hyphen or uh, hyphen itd what is this itd i will tell you but just hold on a bit what is the itd what is the use of this it is nothing but interactive terminal okay don't get uh, very very confused about this this these are the options so if, for example in linux ls hyphen la ls hyphen ltr so hyphen ltr hyphen la how those options are there if you give certain options that will be the uh, the operation will be different if i give ls hyphen la it is going to show me all the all the uh, documents and everything hidden documents also it is going to show you or else hidden uh, data it is going to show uh, show you like that it is also certain options i will tell you about that and the hyphen hyphen name of the container is uh, linux one container so this is the container name next one and the image is ubuntu so this ubuntu i am giving the ubuntu image from where it is getting the image i will tell you in the docker architecture but as of now focus on this now when i press enter it is going to tell you if you can see here in the images i don't have any sort of images available in my local machine or else in my local docker engine i don't have any sort of images okay so now what is happening here look at there <clears throat> unable to find the image ubuntu latest locally so now what it is doing it is pulling the image from where it is pulling the image i will tell you but as of now it is pulling the image and creating a container now if you see on the docker so i have an image pulled from where it is pulled i will tell you but if you see here i have a container running what is the name of the container linux one if you can see here <coughs> docker ps so it is having a container running it is of linux one so if you want to log on to the container if you want to log on to the container what you can do here docker execute hyphen it what is the container name linux one and bash if you give like this now you are inside the linux if you can see the prompt here the prompt is c users uh, c h i t and if you see here root at the right container id which means that uh, right now i am inside the container right now i am inside the container so now what i can do ls hyphen la so here you can see what are the different uh, objects that are available what are the different folders that are available inside the container so now i can run my own application apt install hyphen y or else apt update 
a to the update hyphen y okay and then i can run whatever required uh, softwares are there i can run on this container now if you can see here in general what did you understand so now let me go to a <clears throat> so i am having my physical hardware i am having my physical hardware nothing but my laptop hardware on the top of that i am having windows 11 operating system on windows 11 operating system what i have done i installed a the uh, docker desktop okay for docker for windows on the top of that what i have done i have created a container so this container is having environment it is not having the operating system it is having an ubuntu environment where you are having the binaries and libraries binaries and libraries on the top of that whatever the application that i want i can run the application for example i want the nginx application okay nginx is a web application or i can use it as a proxy also i can install that okay so this is my docker it's my docker desktop which i installed on the windows operating system windows and this is my hardware okay so now if you see we have the uh, container called as linux is running so i am inside the container and here you can see the logs and everything whatever the logs are there and if you go to the inspect what we have done everything will be available for you but don't worry about that i will tell you in the in a bit of time like in the next session or so so now what i will do i will go ahead into the container and now i will run the nginx i will install the nginx apt install hyphen y nginx okay so now i have installed a nginx application good so now what i will do i will come out of this particular container okay so i am coming out of the container so now if you can see docker ps you are having linux one container running and inside the Linux one container, you are having Nginx application and whatever the related applications are there. Now, what I want to do, if you can see here, Docker images. So the Docker image is Ubuntu image, which means that Ubuntu environment. So what is the size of the image? Here you can see 78.1 MB only. So if you go to the operating system, the operating system will be, if you, if you download any ISO file, it is going to show you somewhere around uh, somewhere around 4 GB and 5 GB, 8 GB also. But now if you see here, the environment which we have created is only 78.1 MB, which means that you are having only binaries and libraries. You don't have uh, any extra utilities. Okay. So now what I can do, I can convert this Linux one container into an another image. So look at this. Docker commit Linux uh linux one to uh what i can do here is nginx version one i want to convert it as an image now if you can see docker images i have the second image also nginx version one image from where i have created this image images are very important in docker images are the backbone for your container so whatever your container has to do everything will be recorded on the image so if you create a container you have to create the container with the help of the image only so how you are having i am having the hardware if i want to run any application how i am installing the operating system in the same manner if i want to run any container i need an image so i am going with the nginx image over here so anyways let me create uh, an another mission docker run hyphen itd web app hyphen p i will tell you about each and every option don't worry just to look into the concept 80 colon 80 and then mm, here the name of the container is web app container a new container i am creating and i am exposing port number 80 and with the image nginx version 1 
So now here you can see Docker PS. I have an image or I mean I have an container created with the name web app. Now here also you can see if you go to the containers, two containers, web app container is running on port 8080. Now what I will do, I will go to the Chrome browser. Local host. Okay. HTTP slash slash local host or else I will go with 127.0.0.1. What is the IP address of my mission? Let me check out the IP. IP config. The IP address is this one. Okay. 192.168.22.244. Okay, anyways, coming back to this, uh, let me check out uh, the Docker Docker, yes, I'm getting the uh, port 80 is fine. Hmm. It is also accessible now. If you see on the Docker container, it is running on the port number 8080. So, just showing that the page is not working now. Let me log on to the container once. I will go inside the container Docker execute hyphen it. Web app, why it is not running? I know about that. Web app bash. Now, if you can see system CTL status nginx or else service nginx status, you can see it is not running. So, that's the reason here I am getting the error page. Okay, now what I will do service nginx start. Now, when I start the Nginx service, so if I refresh this, I'm going to get the output. See here, welcome to Nginx. From where I'm getting this output. So the user is now, so I am the user. I am trying to communicate with the container. Okay, so this is a user. So now you can also uh, interact with that. Not here. Why? Because it is on my laptop. So now the user is trying to communicate with this application. Okay, so now what is happening here? The user will provide the IP address of the server and he will be able to interact with it. Sir, how can you say that this particular application is coming from the container? So now what I will do right now, I am inside the container. I will go to cd slash war www html and vi index.html VI is not there apt install nano file okay nano is a, a nano is a reader like just like you were uh, notepad nano is also one of the linux operating system reader okay so now what i will do nano index.html so here <clears throat> welcome to Docker and Kubernetes. I will save it and when I refresh this, see here. So, which means that we are getting the application, we are getting the application from the container. So, now this is how the containers can be created in the Docker engine. Now, if you can see how much amount of RAM and CPU it is consuming still. So, if you see here, it is not consuming any amount of RAM and CPU. Now, what I, I can do here is I can install stress and I can do something differently. But as of now, this is how you can run the applications. Now, if you can see the memory usage is 11.42 MB. So, which means that I am uh, it is getting the memory usage from my local memory itself. Okay. So, this is how the Docker uh, engine will interact or else the, the containers, whatever the containers that you are seeing. So, now the point what you need to understand, which, which container I have installed, I have installed a Linux container. Where I have installed, I installed on the Docker application. Where is Docker application? Docker application is on the Windows operating system. Now, you are having a Ubuntu container that should get the resources, that should get the resources from the 
uh, we, uh, that should get the resources from the physical hardware on my laptop. What are the physical hardware is there? From there, it has to get the resources. How it can get the resources? This particular container doesn't have. This particular container doesn't have the kernel. So this Ubuntu mission has to interact with the Windows kernel. So Ubuntu is a different language and Windows is a different language. How they will mutually communicate for that reason. In the beginning, whenever I am creating the Docker desktop, in the beginning, what I have done? In the beginning itself, I did something. Do you remember what I have done in the beginning whenever I am creating or else whenever I am installing the Docker, uh, Docker engine? I have installed WSL. Do you remember that? Windows subsystem for Linux. So that Windows subsystem for Linux will, will be interacting like a mediator to convert whatever the Linux requests are there to the Windows operating system understandable kernel. Okay. So now this is how your container will be running. Whatever the applications that you want to run, you can install the uh, applications in the requested operating system. I hope you understand about this. Any questions here? So I, I, I think there will be a little bit confusion, but anyways, uh, so what is, if you have any confusion, you can ask me or else if you have any questions, you can ask me now. Open for you all, tell me. Yes, guys. Yeah, uh, one question. Um, mm -hmm. Docker, uh, Docker container, uh, I mean the Docker software is a, itself a, uh, in our, our local system, uh, Windows is there, okay. But uh, in the, you are doing that, uh, install the Linux. And uh, it's, I mean the, the operating system is separate. That is uh, Linux uh, uh, kind of thing, here is a desktop. So how they, we are connected, I mean the, how we are we send the instruction, so it's execute all these things. That's why I said, you know, in between that we are having WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yes, 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 that one, that one, that one. The, yeah. uh, that is the component which will helpful for you to interact the Linux containers with the Windows environment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah, Chaitanya, total how many sessions and uh, so so daily during this time, right? So how many sessions and uh, can you 20 tell? Twenty sessions will be there. Apart from the demos, you will have twenty sessions. This is the second demo, and uh, tomorrow you will have the final demo, and after tomorrow you, the sessions will be started. And from to I mean the third session, whatever the uh, days are that there will be twenty days. It will be there. Okay. Okay. So twenty hours of uh, classes. No, no, correct? no. I I'm not saying twenty hours. Okay. okay. Why? Because within twenty hours we cannot complete the session. Are you able to? Okay. Understand? Yeah, yeah. So each day it is one hour or one and a half hour? One and a half hour. 6.30 to oh. 8. Oh, okay, okay. So 6.30 to 8. Okay, that is fine. And uh, so all these sessions, I see that you are recording. So these sessions will be recorded, will, recording will be provided. Links the to those. The recording or... will be updated in the Google Drive. Okay, the Google Drive and you can access the session. Okay, okay. Okay, so it is 20 days, one and a half hour each day. And, uh, and again, 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 so uh, every day you will be having the session. Uh, I'm thinking of going with the weekends also. I'm not very sure, but at least one or two weekends you will be having. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah that is fine. So, and uh, can you, is the session syllabus in the course content it's the same or it's different it's a little bit different whatever you are seeing in the course content i cannot say you that uh, that content will be there according to the latest update whatever the required things are there that will be there and as well as if there are any see in the session i can in the course content you will be having certain uh, syllabus okay so the syllabus will be similar but at least one or two will be like uh, 
missing or else one or two will be adding to the syllabus. Okay, one or okay. two. Uh, yeah. Where, where can we get the updated uh, syllabus? It's in the Google Drive or? You can go, you can, I have already given in the last session, but anyways, I will give you, uh, uh, tomorrow, I, no, 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 tomorrow I will give you the, the, the application, I mean, uh, not the application, syllabus uh, document. Okay. 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 Syllabus document you will give tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And from, uh, after the demo sessions, this regular sessions, uh, everything will start from the beginning, introduction to containers and everything or? No, no, that will be carrying on in the same manner. See, uh, that's why I am not going with a uh, like a touch up kind of things. Here I am going deep diving into in the demos itself. I am going deep diving into the Docker comp component. Okay, so it mm -hmm. is not like uh, again repeating the everything. Okay, so okay. for you these can be demos. For me, these are the uh, normal classes. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, because yesterday I did not attend the first session. So, is there something that I missed or? Yesterday, yesterday I didn't say anything about the Docker. I just gave you an introduction about what you will have in the sessions. What are the session timings? How many days it will be there? And I have given the syllabus. Okay. So, don't worry about that. Again, I will provide you the document of the syllabus. And I have given a briefing about the physical missions, physical servers. That's it. Apart from that, I did not give anything very serious on a serious note. I didn't go for the doctor out. Right? Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, that is fine. That is fine. One more uh, question. Last question. So in the duration, one hour, 30 minutes, I'm seeing the syllabus. It shows so a very big list. So, yeah, yeah. The, so will the 20 days be enough or maybe there will be a bit of extension in case we are missing something if we don't we will we'll be not... extending we will be extending the hours mostly some days mm -hmm. on the weekends we will be extending somewhere around some 20 hours sorry some two hours three hours also depending on the requirement okay okay, okay. yeah that will be good. not on weekdays again telling you why because i am also working you are also working so on the weekdays, you will be having your work. So I cannot extend on the week weekdays, but on weekends, we will be having some extended session. Yeah, yeah that is good. That is good. Uh, okay. okay. Thanks, Chetan. Yeah. Any further questions? Any further questions? No, nothing from. Any other persons? Any questions related to? Hello, the Yes, yes. I have a doubt. Like in Diwali also, we are going to conduct sessions or not? Uh, Diwali will be off. Okay, so up like till what? No, no, till not. Only for thirty first, it will be off for you. For one and one and two, you will have the session. Okay, it is not like a uh, very big uh, only one for uh, only one session. Uh, I am also traveling to my hometown, but anyways, so for that reason, uh, you won't have a session on uh, Diwali day. That is on thirty first. Remaining days you will have the session. Okay, okay, sir. Any any further questions, guys? Uh, apart from the holidays, regarding your technical knowledge, technicalities regarding the Docker, is the Docker whatever I have said today is everything understandable for you? Yeah, it is. It is becoming clear since it's completely new for us. So, but uh, you are explaining it neatly. Cool. Okay, okay guys. Uh, when yeah, yeah. Uh, start Kubernetes? Like means after seven days or up to like how many session letters? That I cannot tell you. Depending okay. on the understandability of the candidates, it might take me somewhere around five days to complete Docker. Some days it is going to take some seven days to ten days. If I give you a promise, I have to stick for that. Then I have to complete the Docker very fastly. So some people might understand that, some people might not understand that, then that will be becoming a problem for the candidate. 
so now i don't want to make any problem for the candidate who is attending to the session so i will go depending on the understandability of the students okay so after that uh, we will start the kubernetes so mostly i will complete docker by 7 days okay but it is having one and a half hour of session it might be completed around 5 days also it's a very small topic but at least this is the basic for your entire kubernetes if you don't understand the docker you will not understand the kubernetes so uh, take a mark line like 7 days before that also i can complete the docker also. okay i am not giving you a promise that yes i will complete it in 7 days but yes make a mark of 7 days the remaining days you will start the kubernetes Okay, okay, Jaitan. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, that's it from mine. I hope everything is clear. And uh, one more request for you. Uh, please give your proper updated mobile number to the uh, to Durga Soft. Uh, that will help you. Okay, that will help the Durga Soft also. They are they will send a message saying that if what is the feedback. So how you are you able to uh, understand or are you able to join the sessions? Okay, so that uh, you will not find any difficulties in communicating with the Durga Soft also. If you don't provide the proper numbers, then Durga Soft will send a message to you. It will not be reachable to you. And uh, whenever you are, uh, when Durga Soft sends uh, the messages, and if you want to communicate with Durga Soft also, it will be a little bit difficult for you. So my request for you all is provide a proper number so that they will have your uh, number and they will interact with you. If you having any uh, queries related to videos or uh, materials, they will provide you the same. I hope you understand this. So. Yesterday also I got something like there are a few people who has not given a proper number so that we are unable to communicate with you and so that there will be a problem for you also. So provide the proper numbers so that the interaction will be there and they can provide you the videos and docs. So that's it. Uh, have a nice day and we'll meet in the next session.